One SAT strategy when working with equations is to plug numbers into your problem. Trying some numbers in the options could help you to figure out the answer, especially if you're not sure how to approach the question. Take this one for example. On Saturday afternoon, Arman sent M text messages each hour for 5 hours and Tyrone sent P text messages each hour for 4 hours. Which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by Arman and Tyrone on Saturday afternoon? Now, if you're not sure how to construct this equation, then we could try some numbers, right? So let's try some numbers. So it says that Arman sent M text messages each hour for five hours. So I could let M be equal to two. And it also says Tyrone sent P text messages each hour for four hours. So I could let P be equal to three. I could just choose any number. Now, if it said that Arman sent two text messages each hour for five hours, that means in total, Arman would have sent 10 messages, two times five. Likewise, if Tyrone sent three text messages for four hours, then that would be three times four, which is 12. So overall, in total, they would have sent 22 messages. Now that I know that, all I need to do is compare each of my options to see which one of them would give me 22, since my options should represent the total number of messages sent. If I put it into A, 9 times 2 times 3, well, 9 times 2 is 18, and 18 times 3 could never give me 22, so I know A is out. 20 times MP, if 9 MP couldn't give me 22, then 20 MP couldn't give me either, so I know that's out. 5M plus 4P, well, that would be 5 times 2 plus 4 times 3, which is the same thing that I did before to find Armand and Tyrone's number of messages, so that would be 10 plus 12, which is 22. So therefore, my answer is C. Just to make sure, I could try it in D, because if I did, it would be 4 times 2 plus 5 times 3. 4 times 2 is 8, 5 times 3 is 15, and 8 plus 15 is 23. So that would not be equal to 22. In the second question, it says that Ken and Paul each ordered a sandwich at a restaurant. The price of Ken's sandwich was X dollars, and the price of Paul's sandwich was one dollar more than the price of Ken's sandwich. If Ken and Paul split the cost of the sandwiches evenly and each paid a twenty percent tip, which of the following expressions represent the amount of dollar the amount in dollars, sorry, each of them paid? Now let's think about what this question is saying, right? So let's start by substituting. So I'm just going to choose a number. I'm going to choose two again. Remember, we could choose any number that we want, right? So if the price of Ken's sandwich was X dollars, which now is $2, and the price of Paul's sandwich was $1 more than the price of Ken's sandwich, so that means the price of Paul's sandwich was $3. If Ken and Paul split the cost of sandwiches evenly and each paid a 20% tip, right? If we think about what that means, it means that overall, now we would have the money together, which would be $2 and $3, so that's 5 And if each of them paid a 20% tip, that means 20% would have come out of the whole total. So it would be 20% of 5 I can rewrite 20% as one-fifth to make it a little easier to work with as a fraction. And one-fifth times five, five cancels five, that would just give me one dollar. So in total, they would have spent six dollars. Now we want to find which expression represent the amount each of them paid. So if they paid six dollars in total, each of them would have paid three dollars. So basically, we want to figure out which one of these expressions will give us back $3. When we put x into it, that is the value of 2, that's what we had, we need to test each of them. So if I'm starting with a, that would be 0 0.2 times 2 plus 0 0.2. Now, 0 0.2 times 2 is 0 0.4, and 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2 would not give me 3. In B, I have 0 0.5 
times x, so that's 0 0.5 times 2 plus 0 0.1. 0 0.5 times 2 is the same thing as half times 2, so that's 1. And 1 plus 0 0.1 would not give me 3 either. What about c? c is 1.2 times 2 plus 0 0.6. 1.2 times 2, that would be, well, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 0.2 is 0.4, so that would be 2.4 plus 0 0.6, which would give me 3.0 or 3. So here it seems that C is my answer because when I compared them, I got back the same thing. And we could just make sure by testing D as well. If I had D 2.4x plus 1.2, that would be 2.4 times 2 plus 1.2. And I know that 2.4 times 2 would have to be way bigger than 3. So already I know that that wouldn't be 3. Therefore, our answer is C. So if we don't know how to approach a problem or an equation, plugging in numbers helps.